Okay folks, welcome back. So what I'm going to do in this video is I've just been doing a little bit of experimenting here with the uh, the new flouting router design. So you guys have voted enough that, uh, you know, let me know that that's what you want to see. And that's something I've wanted to build right from the get-go. You know, that was a prototype machine. Just like, you know, the pocket hole machine. My pocket hole machine has evolved uh, over the years into something that's, uh, you know, a lot different than the first one. And, uh, and it's going to evolve more too. You guys just keep tuning in. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you here my experiment. So the way the floating router works, as you guys know, it's just a simple lever system. All it is is a pivot point in, in one spot. Then there's another pivot point. And all that does is that allows me to spring load this so I can spring it so it wants to come up. And then the router would be mounted on the top. So when I push down on it, that gives me my pivot point. So you can see that you know, if there was the router bit coming out this way and the bearing on the other side, this would give me my mode of travel here. Uh, and this, just this little short lever system, gives me an incredible range of motion. It gives me about, it's at least 16, I think, or 14 inches by 14 inches. It's a, it's a very large area that would be comfortably covered if I was just to use this simple short lever system. Now, if you guys have seen the video of my original floating router, I made that machine to be comfortable. I didn't make it to be compact because uh, I made my, you know, my cabinet, I made it so that it was a nice height to be able to stand there and work behind it. And, uh, you know, so I wasn't concerned about the size. Now, I know that you guys only got little wee small shops. And uh, so now we're going to build a super small one that'll do, I'm going to even try to, um, to make it so that it has more range than my other machine, uh, believe it or not. So it's going to be a lot smaller. It's going to have more range. And, uh, and it's even going to be, hopefully, easier to build. Uh, I come up with a few different solutions here uh, on how I'm going to build it. Um, so, the one thing that I want you guys to answer me to, uh, or let me know in the comment section below, is what kind of routers do you guys have? I have mostly plunge routers, so they're, they already have their slide mechanism on. Um, I, I, what what do you guys have for routers? Do you have the fixed base router where I'm going to have to make a clamping mechanism to uh, to go around the router? Because I got a plan for that too. I'll just show you here. I was playing around with uh, with the slide mechanism. If you guys have seen my video showing the mini grinder lathe, then I was looking at this slide mechanism. It's so simple. It's not funny. It's just a few pieces of plywood and uh, and just made into a simple set of slides with. A couple of springs to haul it back well i'm amazed at how little movement there is because that was going to be very important um that there's be absolutely no movement from you know the bearing would be on this side on the floating router and then the bit would come out the other side well if there was any fluctuation there it would really mess things up so that it, you know it's going to have to be built super rigid and i was checking to see how tight this is and even if i pry on this thing it doesn't seem to have any movement at all so uh, this a simple slide mechanism with a router mounted on the top would be uh, would be pretty easy. But then it's the fact that I want to get it going back and forth. And if you've seen my other videos, um, you know, just a little simple uh, uh, lever system here would be uh, real easy to make it move back and forth. And I might even get creative on that too on how I make it move back and forth. Uh, so going back to the uh, the lever system here. Um, I thought about a few different ways to do it, but I think it's going to come right down to the simplest way possible is just to make a small little box, then make another, you know, just have a couple of side pieces flat like this that will run against the side of the box, and then, you know, just build a little a little box inside of this that then the router can sit on the top of that. Because when you build that box, the sides, if this thing is going, if, the, if there's a box inside of a box, it doesn't want, it can't move any from side to side and that's what we or this way it can't twist this way or it can't move this way but if you're making just a freestanding machine that you know just has a couple of bolts run through and don't matter how many blocks of wood you line up in a row it's still going to have a chance that it can twist or move like this and with a simple box system yeah, there's no worrying about it lining up it's going to line up every time all by itself all you have to do is drill big sloppy holes down here for these two cams to run on and uh, and then it'll it'll self align itself just spring load it you don't even have to be deadly accurate because the thing is going to want to center itself it's going to want to run flat and and even no matter what you do so um, so 
that's my opinion on on how to build it but we'll just have to get some time i just working on a a real big kitchen i'm going to shoot you guys a little video here to show you too that one where i was uh, the last video where i was sitting sand and well that kitchen's just about done now all them brackets are in place place and looking real pretty and uh, i'll shoot you guys a video to show you that job you know it's it's, it's my countertop fella has to get there and put the countertop on it but other than that it's just about finished so just thought you guys uh thought i'd shoot you a little video just to show you where i'm heading with this thing and uh and let you have a look so hopefully you guys are having fun watching hopefully you'll keep tuning in and we'll see you next time